Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Hello from Orlando, Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman, theCUBE, we are live day three at Enterprise Connect 2019. We have been in Five Nines booth all week and we're very excited to welcome to the program for the first time, Harry Mosley, the CIO of Zoom Video Communications. Harry, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE today. Lisa, Stu, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And you're a Hall of Famer. You have been inducted into the CIO Magazine's Hall of Fame and recognized as one of the world's top 100 CIOs by Computer World. Yes, so we're in the presence of a VIP. <laughs> well, thank you for that. It's, uh, as I say, it's all credit back to the wonderful people that have supported me throughout my career, and I work with some amazing people and leaders and who have supported me in the visions that I've created for their organizations. And so it's, uh, it is, I understand it's about me, but it's also about the great teams that I've worked with in my past. It's like, you can't make this stuff up, yeah. Harry, we, we love talking to CIOs, especially one with such a distinguished career as yours, because the role of CIO has gone through a lot of changes. IT has gone through a lot of changes. Uh, you know, we've been doing this program for nine years. We remember reading Nick Carr's, you know, IT doesn't matter, and you know, we believe IT matters more than ever. Absolutely. Not just IT, the business, the relationship. Maybe give us a little bit of your you know, viewpoint as to you know, the role of the CIO and technology at a show like this. We hear about you know, the CMO and uh, the business and IT all working together. Yeah, so it's actually, in my opinion, it's never been a better time to be a CIO, irrespective of the company you're in, whether it's a tech company like where I'm, you know, at Zoom Video Communications or any one of the prior companies I worked with, professional services, financial services. But even when you think about like trucking, you think about trucking as an industry, you think about trucking as a company, it's like it was a very sort of brick and mortars, but now it's all about digital, right? A friend of mine runs a uh, shipping container company, and you know, to think that they load five miles of wagons every day, and so I said to him, it's like, how long does it take to load a wagon on a truck? It takes four minutes. So you know what, Harry, we're working that down to three, and that'll increase our revenue by 20, 20 25%, and uh, so it's, uh, it's just fantastic. And the pace of change, you know, it's just growing exponentially. It's just fascinating. The things that we can actually do today, we only dreamed about them a year ago. You know, and you think about sort of, it's like, I can't wait to be back here next year. It's like, because it's like, we're just going to lift the roof off this place in terms of the capabilities. And uh, so it's fantastic. Yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. So looking at, a lot of us know Zoom from video conferencing and different things like that, but you said something very interesting in your fireside chat this morning that I hadn't thought about, and that is when, you know, going from audio to video, when you're on a video chat, you really can't or shouldn't multitask. So in terms of capturing people's attention, enabling meetings to happen maybe more on time, faster, more productive, I thought that was an interesting realization. I thought, you're right. It, 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 you know, it just clicks, it just works. You know, mobile, uh, I, you know, when I go back to my, you know, sort of going back on, and, and again, thank you for the recognition from the keynote, but it's like when I go back on my earlier career, it's like dialing that number, dialing that 10 digit number, misdialing that number, what happened? I got to hang up, I got to get a dial tone, I got to dial the numbers again, now I'm like two minutes late. And I, it's like, you know, I know I'm late more often than I'd like, but when it's late because of something like that, that's frustrating. That's really frustrating. And uh, so the notion that you can just click on your mobile device, you can click on your laptop, I have no stress anymore in joining meetings uh, and anywhere. I love telling the story about um, how um, I had a client meeting, I was in O'Hare Airport, and I, I joined the client prospect meeting, I joined the prospect meeting on my phone using the free Wi-Fi service at O'Hare Airport, put up my virtual background on my phone, I just showed you that, Stu, with their logo, shared the content off of my phone. 18 minutes into this 30 minutes call, the, uh, my, uh, the person I was talking to, the CIO for this firm, called a halt to the meeting. It was, it was, this is what exactly what happened. Enough, I've heard enough. Keep going, okay. <laughs> um, enough, and it's like, I didn't know what enough meant. And so I was like a little uh, spooked by that, if you will. He goes, you're on a phone, you're in O'Hare Airport, you got a virtual background, you're sharing content, it's all flawless, 
It's like, this is an amazing experience that we can't get from all the technology investments we've done in this space for our company. So guys, enough. We're starting a proof of concept on Monday. No more discussion about it. Harriet, looking forward to being a business partner. Does it get better than that? It doesn't get better than that. It's like, you know, you hop through security, you get on a plane, and it's like, cruising all the way home. Yeah, I, I mean, Harry, I, I do have to say, uh, you know, disclaimer, we are Zoom customers. I'm actually a Zoom <laughs> admin, and it's this, that simplicity that you've built into it is the experience makes it yeah. easy. And then when you, and Stu, sorry to interrupt you, but it's yeah. like, it's, oh, I get really excited about this stuff, as it, you can tell. <laughs> but it's like, then you look at the enterprise, you're, so you're admin. You get into the enterprise management portal, it's like, you know, Stu, I had a really bad experience. Oh, let me look it up. Oh yeah, okay, where were you? You know, sort of, I was in outer Mongolia, Ah, okay, yeah, and about five minutes into the call, you had some packet loss, it's like, yeah, it wasn't, you know, but it still maintains the connection, right? Yeah. So you can actually, so our enterprise management well, portal is awesome. Yeah, so th that's actually where I was going with the question is, you know, I, I remember back, I actually, I worked for Lucent right after they spun out from AT&T, and we had videos talking about pervasive video everywhere, in my home, in the business, feels like we're almost there, but still even when I have a team get together, uh, my folks that live in Silicon Valley, their connectivity's awful, uh, you know, when they have there, and it's like, oh well, my computer or my phone don't have the cycles to be able to run, maybe, maybe we have to turn off some of the video. Are, are we getting there? Will 5G solve some of these issues? Will the, the next generation of phones and computers keep up with it? Because it's, it's, I'm sure you can guess, we're big fans of video. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of well, what we so, do, so. Well, because what do, what video you is the new yeah. voice, right? It's like, we like video, why? It's like, you know, if I can only hear you and I can't see you, then when I make a statement, I can't see you nodding. If I say something you like, you know, you nod. You, 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 so we get that concurrency um, of sort of, of uh, experience. Um, again, it comes back to where were we a year ago, the capabilities we had, where will we be a year from today? Whether it's AI, whether it's the, you know, the power in the device in front of us, whether it's the network, it's like you know, 5G is becoming a reality, it's going to take some time to get there, um, but you've got sort of great technologies uh, and ca capabilities that, you know, you look at like the introduction of our real-time transcription services, I mean, how cool is that? You know, I'm sure there's lots of questions that, you know, so lots of people would ask about that real-time transcription in terms of, well, what's next? I'm not going to talk about what's next, um, but uh, well, I, as, as they say in life, watch the space. Yeah, just you made some announcements at the show with some partners. I actually uh, believe Otter AI is one of the yeah, ones you absolutely. mentioned there. Yeah, I got a yeah. demo of their yeah, yeah. thing, you know, real time, a little yeah. bit of AI built in there. Yeah. Um, can you talk about some of those partnerships? Yeah, so we have, you know, we, we love our partnerships, right? Whether it's on the AI space with, you know, sort of Apple and Siri and Amazon and Otter. Uh, we also love our partnerships with, you know, with uh, Crestron and Logitech and HP um, and Poly, of course. Uh, you know, again, it's the notion of we have terrific software. You guys realize that, right? It's terrific software, proprietary QoS, proprietary capabilities. It's like it's a fantastic experience every time on our software. These partners have great technologies too, but they're more on the hardware side. We are software engineers at our core. Um, as Andresen said, I think it was about 10 years ago, software is eating the world. So we are, so you take terrific software, you embed it in terrific hardware with terrific partners, and what happens is you get exceptional experiences. And that's what we want to deliver to people. So it's not about the technology, it's about the people. It's about making people happy, making it easy, taking stress off the table. You go to the meeting, you light it up, you share the content, you record it, you can watch it later, it's like, it's just terrific. So the people, the experience as you talk about, we've been hearing that thematically for the last three days. As we know as consumers, the consumer behavior is driving so much of this change that has to happen for companies to not just digitally transform, but to be competitive. Uh, we're in Five Nines booth and they mentioned they've got five billion minutes of recorded customer conversations. You guys can record but it's not just about the recording of, of the voice and the video and the transcription. Tell us about what you're doing to enable the context so that the data and the recordings have much more value. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, you know, it's, um, it's the notion of being able to sort of rewind and replay. It's like, it's the no I, I'll give you a really, another example if I may. Uh, coming out of an office in, in uh, Palo Alto, jumped in the Uber, going back to San Jose for a client meeting. 
Um, I'm a New Yorker, as we talked about a few minutes ago, and uh, uh, I don't know the traffic patterns in in southern, you know, sort of in the in the valley. And uh, it's about five uh, about five o'clock, five fifteen. San Jose meeting six, five forty five. Normally it would be fine, but it's rush hour. What do I know about rush hour? I know a lot more now than then. I realize I'm not going to be able to make it on time. Put up the client uh, logo, virtual background on the phone in the Uber. Client gets on the call, Harry, where are you? I'm in the back of an Uber. It's like, you know, again, the same sort of experience. Then he asks the question, well, you know, sort of with this recording capability, can I watch it at 35,000 feet? Of course you can. And it's like, that was it. That was, a, that was the magic moment for this particular client because he said, I'm client facing all the time. I don't get in time, I don't always meet my management meetings, so I won't have to ask my colleagues what happened and get their interpretation of the meeting. I can actually watch the meeting uh, when I'm at 35,000 feet on a plane going to Europe. So, um, so that's what this is all about. All right, well, well, Harry, obviously this space excites you a bunch. Can you bring us uh, back a little bit? You know, this brought you out of retirement uh, and you know, the, the, chase, the, the space is changing so fast. If we come a year from now, uh, you know, what, what kind of things do we think we'll be talking about and what's going to keep you excited going forward? Yeah. So let's uh, talk about the first part first and then the, you know, sort of break it into two. So what, it's like, yes, I had, I had a fantastic career and I retired. And, so when I met Eric and I met the leadership team at Zoom and I dug into the technology and understood sort of A, the culture of the company, which is amazing. When I understood the product capability and how this was built as video first and how we had this fo manical focus, if you will, on sort of being a software company at our core um, and how it was all about the people. That was, uh, that was sort of a very big part of my decision. So that was one. Two is, um, Look, we have a labor shortage, right? Um, we can't hire enough people. We can't hire the people. We have more jobs than we have people. So, and, uh, and so you know, sort of retaining talent is really important. So giving them the technology and the studies that have been done, if you make an investment in the technology, that helps with retention, it helps with profit, it helps with sort of uh, uh, product in, in, in innovation. Um, so investment in the, in the people. Um, uh, and, and then the, the ability to collaborate it's very hard to work if you don't collaborate, right? It's like it just makes it really uh, very sort of lumpy, if you will. So um, the ability to collaborate locally, nationally, and globally, and people say, well, what's collaborating locally? It's kind of like we can just walk down the corridor. Yeah, well, if you're in two different buildings, how do you get there? And it gives us you know, a foot of snow between you, it like, makes it really hard. So collaborating locally, nationally, and globally is super important. Um, so you put all that together, that was, you know, sort of uh, what sort of was the what convinced me to sort of say, okay, you know what, retirement, we're just going to put a pause button on that, and we're going to have some fun over here. And it really has been. So I've over a year now, and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, so yes, big advances. What's what's in the future? I think the future is like you know, there's been a lot of discussion around sort of AI. We hear that it's like um, all the time, and. We've seen from a variety of different providers this week in terms of their, their, their thoughts around how they're going to leverage AI. It's not about the technology, it's about the end of the, it's about the user experience. And you look at sort of the things that we've started to do, we talked about real-time transcriptions a few moments ago. You look at the partnership that we have with LinkedIn where you can hover over the name and their LinkedIn profile pops up. Um, you're going to see this, I just see this as a sort of exponential change in these abilities because it's a, you have these building blocks today that you can grow on an on a exponential basis. So um, the world is our oyster is how I fundamentally think about it and the art of the possible is now possible. Um, and uh, so let's, uh, I, I, think the, I think the future is going to be you know, absolutely amazing. I mean, who would have, uh, sorry Lisa, who would have thought a year ago, you could get on a plane using facial recognition. Let me just throw that out there. I mean, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Who would have thought a year ago that when you rent a car, you can just look at the camera on the way out and you were approved to go? Who would have thought that? So with that speed, I'm curious to get your take on how Zoom is facilitating adoption. You mentioned some great customer examples where your engagement with them via Zoom video conference basically sold the POC in and of itself with you uh, at an airport. That's a, that's a great question. I guess O'Hare has pretty good Wi-Fi. What's that? O'Hare has pretty good Wi-Fi. 
a little choppy, but it, was, but it, it, was, it worked. It worked. Because right? uh, of our great software, yeah. There you go. But in terms of adoption, so as customers understand, all right, our consumers are so demanding, we have to be able to, yep. to react and facilitate collaboration internally and externally. How, what are some of the, the tools and the techniques that Zoom delivers to enable those guys and girls to go, I get it, I'm going to use it, and I'm actually going to actually use it yeah, successfully? I, this is a question, I, you know, I, I don't know how many clients, CIOs, CTOs, C-suite execs I talk to, and they all say, they all ask me uh, similar sorts of questions, like we're not a video first culture. We're not, it's like video, it's kind of like we're a phone culture. And then I, so I throw that right back at them and I say, and why is that? Because we don't have a good video platform, aha. Uh -huh. Now, when you have good video, when it just works, when it's easy, when it's seamless, when it, it, when it's platform agnostic, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, Linux, VDI, web, when, it's, when, when you have this sort of um, this, uh, uh, platform, when you're agnostic to the platform and it's a consistent, high quality experience, you use it. So it's the, it's the notion of, Lisa, it's the notion of, would we rather get into a room and um, would we rather get into a room and sort of have a face-to-face -face meeting? Absolutely. So why would you get on a call and not like to see the people you're talking to? You like to see the people, why? Because it's a video first. It, it, unless it's just one of those meetings that's on my calendar and I didn't want to be there and I'm not going to listen. But I, I totally agree with you, Howard. So, Another hot button topic that I, I think we're at the center of here and that I'm sure you have an opinion on, remote workers. So we've watched some really big companies, I think you know, really got back in the dialogue a couple of years ago when Yahoo was like, okay, everybody's got to come in and work for us. And we've seen some very large public companies that said you need to be in your workforce. Uh, and you know, I, as I said, I'm sure you've got some pretty strong opinions on this. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, quite honestly, Stu, but it's like, I think you're reading my brain because it's like, uh, <laughs> these are things I love talking about. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, uh, it's um, sorry, repeat the question? Remote workers. Remote workers, yeah. So first of all, uh, uh, I was at an event recently and we talked about remote work. We didn't like the term. It's a distributed workforce. Yes. Because if, you're, if you say you're a remote worker, it's kind of like, that, that doesn't give you that warm feeling of being part of the organization. So we, call it, so we said, we should, we should drop calling people remote workers and we should call them, a, it's a distributed workforce. So that's, that's, that's uh, one. Uh, two is, you know, um, I'm in New York, I'm in Orlando, I'm in Chicago, I'm in Atlanta, I'm in Denver, uh, I'm on planes, I'm in Uber. I don't feel disconnected at all. Why? Because I can see my colleagues uh, and, and, and it's immersive. Um, they share content with me. I'm walking down Park Avenue and I've got my phone and it's like they're sharing content and I'm zooming in and I can see them and I can hear them and I'm giving feedback and I'm marking up on my phone as like as I'm walking. So I don't feel, and, and then I, you know, and then when I go to, it's fascinating, and then I go to San Jose and I'm walking around the office and I'm seeing people like physically, it doesn't feel like I haven't seen them. It's like I, you know, it's really funny. It's like, I was in San Jose last week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday in San Jose, took the red eye back, hate the red eye, but it's like, I, I don't like flying during the day, I just think it's inefficient, a waste of time. Um, took the red eye back, now I'm on calls Friday morning from my office at home with my green screen, Zoom background, and everybody's got, it's like I'm talking to the same people I was talking to yesterday, but they were in the flesh, now they're on video. And it's like, Harry, where are you? Why didn't you come to the room? Well, I'm back in New York. It's just, you know, it's just that simple, yeah. That's simple and really it sounds like, Harry, what Zim is delivering is a cultural transformation for some of these newer or older companies who there is no reason not to be a video culture. Yeah. We thank you so much for taking thank some you. time thank to you. stop by theCUBE and chat with Stu and me about all of the exciting things that brought you back into tech. And I'm excited to, to dial up what, how I'm using Zoom. Well, we can take five minutes after this and I can show you some cool tricks. Wow, from the CIO himself, Harry Mosley, thank you so much thank for you. your time. Thank you. Great to have you on the program. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE.